and today we're going to be learning how to use the Ocean Optics USB 4000 specifically for fluorescence. So there are three main components to this instrument. You have your detector, your source, and your cuvette holder. So the source is a monochromatic wavelength that's going to be going into a cuvette, which should be in this holder. And then fluorescence has your sample emitting light at a 90 degree angle to the incident light. So 90 degrees to the incoming light, we have a fiber optic cable that connects to your detector. So all of the photons that are being emitted from your sample will be sent to the detector, which then will send that to the computer to show the spectrum on the screen. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is plug in the detector. So there's a little port on the side that this will connect to, and this cable then is USB into the computer. So we're gonna go ahead and shut this drawer to simulate a dark room. And then it's already plugged in to the computer via USB. And we heard the sound that it makes when it connects to it. So we're gonna go ahead and open the software, which is Ocean View. And then from here, that first pop-up was showing you that the device was found by the software. And then the second pop-up, we're gonna go ahead and click on Spectroscopy Application Wizard and then Fluorescence. We're gonna wanna do a live acquisition. And then we're going to enable the strobe lamp. We are then going to set the integration time to 1000 milliseconds, the average scans to 10, and the box car width to 10. Electric dark should also be selected and trigger mode should be continuous. Those should be default that way, so you shouldn't have to change them at all. We're then going to click on next. And once we have a run finish here, which when I click next, a run just finished, so we got a live acquisition to come up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let this one finish as well. And then once you have a live acquisition, you're gonna go ahead and click on the light bulb, which is then going to take your next run and store it as the background that's going to be subtracted from each of your runs. And then once you have a background to subtract, you're gonna go ahead and click finish. And then you're gonna wanna pause because this device is just gonna keep running over and over again unless you pause it. And then for all of the samples that you run from here on out, I recommend you click the play pause button. This will do one run and then pause the instrument. If you did play, that will just continually do runs over and over again like it was doing, and you'll have to click pause after each one. So this is a 10 millimolar Rubippi sample. So this is what you guys will be running for PCHEM Lab. And we're gonna go ahead and put the four-sided cuvette into your sample holder. And these two little knobs can be used to clamp your sample into place. Um, don't over tighten them because you can break the cuvette. Just have them tight enough to where they hold the cuvette in place. So once the cuvette is in, we're gonna go ahead and shut the drawer again to simulate the dark room. And then we're gonna click the play pause button. Once that runs all the way through, we'll be able to zoom in. But the first thing you're gonna wanna do is come up, make the crosshair come up on the screen. So you only have to do this once, but you're going to left click on the screen and your crosshair should come up. If you have any of these tools selected, the crosshair will not come up. You need to unselect the tool and then left click the screen. To zoom in, I like to use just the magnifying glass with the plus and then just zoom in on your peak. And then to move the crosshair, I usually just use the tools over here. So this wavelength will be your moving your crosshair to the highest point, which I'm gonna say is about 415 inch. It's gonna be close enough. And then what you're gonna record is this number here, which is your intensity. And as you will be adding quencher throughout each this experiment, the intensity of your fluorescence should go down. And then once you've run all of your samples and you're ready to shut the program down, you're just going to be able to click on the X. And then if it prompts you to save any of your spectra, you don't need to. And then we're gonna go back over here, remove the sample, and then also unplug the spectrophotometer. 